Module 10. Here we will tackle periodic motion and its mathematical formulation that describes it. In our daily life we experience things like the repeating motion of the ocean at the beach or devices to monitor time. The behavior of these things are what we call periodic motion or oscillation. It is simply defined as a repetitive motion that acts over and over. A body that undergoes a periodic motion has a stable equilibrium position or in simple terms a position where it always goes back and typically the origin point. Let us examine some forces that cause oscillation. Here we have a block lying on a frictionless surface attached to a spring with a spring constant K. The block is allowed to oscillate back and forth. Let us look at some terms. The length x when the spring is exanded is called amplitude and it is the maximum magnitude of displacement from its equilibrium. So, in a frictionless surface this x will be moving back and forth from the equilibrium position. Cycle is the complete vibration or one complete round trip made by the block that undergoes periodic motion. Looking at the figure below, we have a pendulum moving from an initial position and final position is the same. So, one cycle of the pendulum is just one rotation of the block where it ends at the position where it started. The period is the time parameter for the periodic motion but specifically the time required to achieve one complete cycle. Frequency is the number of cycles per unit time or period. The SI unit of frequency is hertz which is equal to one cycle per second. Angular frequency is similar to angular velocity but it is measured as the amount of time it cycles for a length of 2 pi. Period in relation to frequency is that they are inversely proportional to each other thus we can write the angular frequency as either equal to 2 pi times frequency. The other is that we can write it also as equal to 2 pi over the period t. Simple harmonic motion or SHM is the simplest kind of oscillation occurs when the restoring force F is directly proportional to the displacement from equilibrium X as shown by the equation AF equals to negative KX. As shown earlier, a block oscillates in a periodic motion but the force that initiated this motion is an external force which we must understand by now that its magnitude is equivalent to that of the restoring force exerted by the spring. Now as we release this body, it will continue to vibrate in a simple harmonic motion. Objects that undergo simple harmonic motion are called oscillators. We also consider the acceleration for simple harmonic motion. So for motion along a single axis or linear motion we recall the acceleration equation which is just the second derivative of the displacement x with respect to time. If we recall the force exerted by the spring or the restoring force, we see that we can equate the two equations and arrive at an equation that describes acceleration for SHM. Where the negative sign indicates that the acceleration and displacement always have opposite direction. Here we have a turntable with a ball M rotates around it. It is illuminated by a light beam that projects a shadow of this ball onto a screen. As you can see the ball rotates around the table and its shadow moves back and forth in a straight line as shown by the figure. Now, we write a mathematical expression that relates the linear and circular simple harmonic motion. At time t the vector OQ from A the origin to the reference point Q makes an angle phi with the positive x-axis. As the point Q moves around the reference circle with constant angular speed, the vector OQ rotates with the same angular speed. Such a rotating vector is called a phasor. The x-component of the phasor is x equal to amplitude times cosine of phi. Taking the derivative of the displacement component that is a function of x equals to a cosine phi with respect to time we get the velocity function. 
This velocity function is the tangential velocity or VQ in the figure. We know that the behavior of this velocity is that it remains tangent to the surface of the circular trajectory of the mass. Taking the derivative of this velocity would yield to its radial acceleration or centripetal acceleration which is directed towards the center. Shown the figure it is labeled as AQ. Take note of the changes of the trigonometric functions during derivations. Here we will show the derivation of the angular velocity or the angular frequency for using the extracted values for position and acceleration. So, if we substitute the expression of radial acceleration to the acceleration along x as shown in the figure we get an expression of acceleration related to its angular frequency. Comparing this to the simple harmonic motion, we get an expression for the angular frequency that is equal to the square root of the ratio of spring constant over the mass. Here we have an example of a spring mounted horizontally, with its left end held stationary. By attaching a spring balance to the free end. If we pull the right end with a force 6.0 newtons causes a displacement of 0.03 meters. Then, we remove the spring balance and attach a 0.50 kilograms body to the end, pulling it to a distance of 0.020 meters, releasing it and watching it oscillate. Letter A, find the force constant of the spring balance when x equals 0.03 meters. And letter B, find A angular frequency, frequency, and period as the mass oscillates. First step, we draw the problem. So we have two cases, the first one is not oscillating but rather stationary but pulled by a spring balance and second is that we allow it to oscillate with a mass attached to one end of the spring. The second step is to use the ideal equations. For letter A, we recall the expression for the restoring force which is just force equals negative spring constant time displacement. We then substitute the known values of the force F equals to negative 6 newtons and positive X equals to 0.03 meters. The displacement X and F have opposite signs as mentioned earlier. Then we get a value of the spring constant of 200 newtons. For letter B, we find the angular frequency, frequency, and period. We recall the expression of angular frequency which is equal to the square root of the ratio K over M. We get that the angular frequency is equal to 20 radians per second. For the frequency it is equal to the angular frequency over 2 pi. We see that it is about 3.2 Hz A and for the period which is just the inversely proportional to frequency we get T is about 0.31 seconds. In this scenario, we consider that the mass moves at a later time T at an angular position theta, Where theta is equal to the sum of the angular frequency times T plus the initial angle phi. So, we alter the expression for the position x at a later time t which is equal to amplitude times cosine of a angular frequency times t plus the initial angle phi. We can also write the displacement in terms of sine function but if we apply the identity for the relation of sine and cosine separated by an angle of pi over 2 we see that they are just the same and we can write them in terms of cosine function. As the disc rotates its maximum displacement is A or negative A. So, we see in the function of cosine that its maximum is equal to A or negative A. Here we have a simulation of the disc casting shadows on a two-dimensional plane. We relate here its behavior as it progresses through time. We see that it forms a wave. We see the graphical representation of the displacement x a function of cosine. We know that one complete cycle is one rotation and here we see it in a wave form. One complete cycle or one period simply starts and ends at the same point. We know that for one complete cycle its displacement is 2 pi. 
Recall the expressions for the angular frequency or equation 10.6, if we determine the value of the angular frequency times one period then this is just equal to the length of 2 pi which is the distance for one rotation. Here we can produce a function of the period which is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. For the velocity and acceleration, we can take the first derivative of the displacement cosine function for the velocity and take the second derivative of the displacement function and get the acceleration. For the acceleration function we substitute some terms to express it in terms of k and m. Here we have an example. We are given the initial position x0 and initial velocity v0 for the oscillating body, determine the phase angle phi and the amplitude aa at time t0 equal to 0. First step is to use the ideal equation. Recall that the initial values of the position, and velocity at time t0 can be expressed in terms of its cosine and sine functions. We then take the ratio of the initial v log d over position and arrive at a value of negative angular frequency times tangent of phi or phasor angle. If we take the inverse tangent of the function we get a an expression for the phase angle phi which is the tangent inverse of the ratio of the negative v naught over angular frequency times initial position. To solve for the amplitude a at time t0 equal to 0 we square the equation for the initial position and velocity. We then see that we can use the identity function by summing the squares of cosine and sine which is equal to 1 and we get an expression for the amplitude. We see that the amplitude is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of initial position plus the ratio of initial velocity over angular frequency. Now let us examine what happens to the graphical representation of the wave when we alter its parameters. First, we increase the mass and we see that its period also increases. In the second case, we increase the spring constant and it appears that the period decreases. Then lastly, increasing the amplitude A will only increase A and not affect the period at all. Now, since we are dealing with objects that are moving then we have to tackle the energy of the system. We recall the expression for work relating to a spring constant and kinetic energies of moving objects. Here we see that for this case where the surface is frictionless, the energy is just from the spring and motion of the block on the horizontal. So, energy total is equal to 1 half times the mass times velocity squared plus 1 half times the spring constant times the displacement of the spring x squared. The force exerted by an ideal spring is a conservative force, and the vertical forces do not work, so the total mechanical energy of the system is conserved. So, when the body is at maximum displacement, its velocity is equal to zero and the energy present would be only from the potential energy from the spring. The conservation of energy applies to simple harmonic motion and we see that at two different positions the energy is equal. The kinetic energy plus elastic energy as it is moving is equal to its maximum expansion with x equals to a. If we take this and add on the information about x, v, and time t shown in equation 10.12 we can have an expression to calculate the energy at its maximum contraction. We note also the angular equation in equation 10.6 and the mathematical equation for identity we arrive at the expression of energy at its maximum. Energy is equal to 1 half times the spring constant k times the amplitude square and this energy is constant shown in equation 10.22. Here we look into the velocity of simple harmonic motion. 
Looking at the figure, we see that maximum speed occurs when the compression length x is equal to zero. A taking this into the formulation of the conservation of energy we get a general equation of velocity at various points shown in equation 10.23. So, the maximum speed is shown in equation 10.24 and we can write this in terms of angular velocity shown also in the same equation. Here we have a spring hanging on the ceiling. Without the mass, it has a length L and when the mass is added it is stretched to a length of L plus delta L. We set the lowest position Y equal to zero when it is stretched with the mass. At a later time the block and spring oscillates and the length at that position is delta L minus Y. Here we write the restoring forces for both conditions. We have at Y equal to zero and it shows that it is equal to K times the change in length minus the weight of the block. At a later time it is equal to K times delta L minus Y then minus weight. Summing the forces along the Y axis at this later period, we see that it is equal to negative spring constant times X. So we see that the vertical simple harmonic motion does not differ from horizontal simple harmonic motion. The difference is the position x equal to zero no longer corresponds to the point at which the spring is unstretched. Here we have an example. The shock absorber in an old car with mass 1000 kg is completely worn out. When a 980 newtons person climbs into the car, it sinks around 2.8 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meters. The car with a person aboard, hits a bump, the car starts to oscillate up and down in SHM. Find period and frequency of the oscillation. We note the given values from the problem. The first step is to draw the problem. Initially, the system of the spring and car does not vibrate and we consider this position as at y equal to zero dot we then add the person and the system oscillates up and down with respect to the position y equal to zero. The weight of the person creates the compression effect with length x as it vibrates. So we have the weight of the person WP is equal to negative kx and k is about 3.5 times 10 to the power of 4. We then recall the equation for the period which is shown in equation 10.11. Note that the mass here is the total mass as it oscillates. So we sum 1000 kg plus 100 kg. So the period is measured to be about 1.11 seconds and this is the period of oscillation. Frequency is then measured then 1 divided by the period and it is about 0.91 Hz. Here we have an example. A body of mass 0.5 kg is attached to a wall by a spring of constant 100 newtons per meter. It is given an initial velocity, at x equal to 0, of 5 meters per second. Letter A, find the total energy of the body. Letter B, find the amplitude of oscillation. Letter C, find the velocity when the displacement is half the amplitude. Letter D, Find the displacement when the velocity is half the initial velocity. Letter E, find the displacement when the kinetic and potential energy are the same. Letter F, find the frequency and the period of the motion. Letter G, find the maximum acceleration of the body. Here we see a drawing of the problem. We examine that x equal to zero would be at its maximum speed. First we find the total energy of the system. Based on the given, we can calculate the total energy as the sum of the kinetic energy plus the elastic potential shown in equation 10.21. At maximum speed we see that x is equal to zero and we get that the total energy is equal to 6.25 Joule which is constant. For letter B, 
we find the amplitude of oscillation at the condition where its speed is equal to zero and the length x is equal to a we see that it is about 0.35 meters as the maximum amplitude of oscillation. Letter C, we find the velocity of the mass when its displacement is half of the displacement. We do this by using the conservation of energy and setting x equal to half of the amplitude. We rewrite this equation and obtain a value of about negative or positive 4.03 meter per second. Letter D, we find the displacement when the velocity is half the initial velocity. We do this by using the conservation of energy and setting the velocity to half of the initial and we get that the displacement is about 0.31 meters. For letter E, we find the displacement when the kinetic and potential energy are the same. We set the kinetic energy equal to elastic potential energy. Rewriting the equation we see that the displacement is about 0.35 meters. For letter F, we find the frequency and the period of the motion. So, we recall the frequency equation and the period relation and it is about 2.25 Hz for the frequency and the period is about 0.44 seconds. We use the ideal equation to solve this problem. Recall the expression for acceleration and we get that acceleration maximum would be at x equals to a where the velocity is zero. Then maximum acceleration is given as the equation shown here and substituting the amplitude a we get that the maximum acceleration is around positive or negative 70 meter per second square. The end for now and I hope you learned something new today. For questions and comments you may send them to diyeslearningstuff at gmail.com. A you may review the slide on YouTube at diese at diese learning stuff. Note, please do not forget to use your school email. Also write your complete name and a class section. A thank you for listening and see you next time.